good morning, everybody. Thank you for attending this, this meeting. Uh, this is to continue talking about the, the R and R studio, and also to remember some of the fundamentals of the, of the language, in fact. So in this session, we are going to continue um, uh, talking about uh, data types, data manipulation, and the relation with functions, how, how the, the data type uh, define um, many of the functions and that in fact are, it's a program built uh, around functions. So uh, let's start talking a uh, couple minutes about what I talked previously. And R is an open source scripting language. And it has uh, some years in the market, but in fact, this uh, program was developed with the intention to, to make a complex statistical analysis. That is why uh, this is the approach of the, of the language. Also, we need to remember that when we learn to program in R, we really uh, have uh, some kind of interoperability with another language. So it's easy to integrate um, and develop an environment with Python, with C, with C++ or with Net and Fortran too. So many of the applications that are currently uh, mm, available or packages that are available in R uh, are written in another languages like C and, and Fortran and some some others in Perl. But now that the program is um, has a lot of elements and structure, we can find a lot of packages that are written in R itself. So this is a very complete um, a scenario about what we can do with the language. Also, we need to remember that, that R is a programming language and also it's a software development environment. So we can uh, go beyond if we really uh, are interested in make uh, applications for, for share with everybody. Okay, now, uh, then let's say that the fundamental of the interoperability with the lingua, with the language is that we have this, this R base that is uh, really an interpreter. And this interpreter is connected with another, uh, in another high level of logger. And this logger is what we see really when we are uh, making code for do something. So this is not the only kind of, of uh, integrative development environment that we can use, but it's the most popular, and it's the reason why we are taking it in this in this uh, in these talks. And and why is this? Well, because the this um let's to say this container has all the elements uh, that we can use to write a code, to debug the code, to see the variables that we are creating in the environment, see visualizations, and so we have an easy way to go and to, uh, to, the, to the scripts, to the code, to the files and create a, a full project. Uh, but of course you have another kind of, of tools that you can use uh, to do the same, but are not, uh, are not so popular like our studio. So this is also a plus because for example, um, you can find uh, easily code you can uh, study and adapt to your to your project. So this is another reason why uh, it's a good practice to start with something that is um, uh, easy to find and popular. And there is a lot of resources available in the in Google. Okay, and in the in previous meeting we also talked that to because of the kind of relation they have they has are with our studio. You need to install uh, the interpreter and you need to install also the interactive development environment. So at least you need to install these two, these two uh, packages, these two resources um, uh, to, to start to program with, with R. Where um, I would like to also share early that you have the resources in, in these links that you see here. This is the first talk and this is the, the resources of the second talk in case that you want to check something. Okay, now let's let's to continue. Uh, well, in this uh, talk, um, I'm going to talk uh, about more data types and the difference with the different data types and how uh, we manipulate these data types and 
the basic operations that we can perform over these uh, different data types. And also the relation that has um, the data type with, uh, with R functions. Um, so it's important to say that, that we have different styles to learn. So uh, this is just, um, I, I, I think in that, for example, uh, we need to give the tools uh, to develop capabilities to to look for ourselves and other resources and to and to choose the the learning environment that comes with all. So that is why uh, one of the resources that I'm that I'm uh, having here for you. Well, I'm going to show at the end because I don't want to to leave the presentation. Um, you need to to look for for different tools. So let me let me show you this. Here's a here's a link that I'm going to share with you. When you can go um, to to a resource that I like too much because when you are a beginner and you are starting to learn something, uh, you need to know that the the way that the that the resources are designed and it's not for everybody. Uh, we have different styles, so you can go and install in our studio and go, for example, with a more structured language like Tidyverse, but maybe you don't like the kind of style. So you can go and, and go to the introduction of type statics in R. It depends on the goal that you are pursuing when you want to learn something. So I invite you to scan this because here you are going to find, for example, if you are interested in R for data sciences, Maybe it's that that's not sense that you spend a lot of time learning these two resources because you need to learn about the tools that you have available to interact with with packages that that they are made for data sciences. In fact, for example, if I need these uh, machine learning models that are built uh, for Python, it's better to spend my time trying to understand the interoperability into the packages and directly uh, try to implement uh, these, uh, these tools to a specific package, just like Reticulate, where, where you can link, for example, R with a Python. So this is important that you keep in mind that you don't need to follow uh, any specific um, results, just go, for that uh, function for every one of us. And also there is here another resources that uh, explain more about how is the syntaxis, uh, how is the structure of the, of the commands that I write. So this is to create more the fundamentals of any language because uh, most of the languages, the programming languages uh, that are in high level have a uh, very uh, similar syntaxes. So it depends what you want to, to understand. And also we have resources, for example, when we are building this kind of resources, when we, we really uh, are pursuing to build some kind of code to, to be readable, to learn uh, someone else things that can be useful. So perhaps maybe it's better to me spend the time trying to understand a code that is related, for example, with publishing some kind of work, no? So it's not necessary to go through, through these courses in a sequential way, just to define what is the purpose, what, is, what you want to do, really. So this is, I think that this is important step to define when we are beginners. Now, um, the second thing that I have here is that you have available um is in sheet sheet when we for example let me let me click here uh, uh a cheat sheet when we can uh for example uh go to the full environment of the of of our studio when we can see for example uh what is this uh what is this stuff done remember that we are seeing for example let me open my art Oh, this is, let me move this. Let me see. How I move this thing? Ah, here. Mm -hmm. 
breaking. You can search for it there. Yes, I'm trying to open my R, but ah, yes, it's here. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so used to say that, for example, when we are uh, trying to understand uh, that we have here the the interactive development environment, we have uh, this container with another containers. When now we know that here we have the 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 panel where we speak code. Here we have we here we have the the console or the terminal where we can debug the the, script, the code. Here we know that we have the files of the project packages uh, that we can install directly from this screen, or maybe we can just uh, trigger a command. But you can also do it through the through this window. I can I can, for example, pick up to install this library or to load up, depending if you have or not. And I have the option to install, to update, or just to load the library, library directly from here. But um, well, we also have a help resource, we have a view where we have a presentation, and here we have a lot of panels too. So the idea to, to the cheat sheet is that you can here check uh, every one of these buttons and options because Sometimes we don't use uh, really all these couple of, of buttons and links and options that we have. So in case that you uh, are a more graphical uh, people, so you can go here and see uh, every one of the panels, for example, and I can see, oh, okay, this is to import data sets. This is uh, to see the history of the comment that I'm writing. For example, I go here. Uh, well, I'm not running here, not, nothing now. Here's the history. This is all the comment that I tried yesterday, for example, when I was checking this, uh, the, the, the material for this talk. So you can see that all the comments that we are triggering are stored here. Well, this depends if I have uh, set up my art to do this. In uh, any case, you have here all the, all the comments and things that you can learn about the specific common or bottom. So this is important if you're a graphical person and you like to, to go to the, to the full resources. And also we have here, um, uh, this is to talk about functions. I'm going to go back to the, to the talk. Okay, so this is just to say that you can uh, pick up the, the better way that you, the resources that you really need to, to advance in the, in the talk. Now, I'm going to continue talking about these data types. Uh, some that are some are more complex now in this talk are not just basic data types. We are going to talk about um, these common operations that we can uh, make in each one of these uh, data types. For example, let's to say that we talk in the in the in the last talk that if we have for example a numeric uh, variable that is assigned to a class in R that is called numeric like that so i can say that like this uh, with this kind of variable with this class of, of of variable i can perform for example math operations because it's a number so i have available uh the the usual operations and another more complex um uh formulas there are packages in functions that is the the talk for today and and also for example i can uh take a logical uh, a logical variable and the logical variable has also associated uh, common operations to that that are uh, different to these ones because these these operations are built into function with numeric uh, with the numeric class of of objects and the logical and the and the for example the two tables like the ones that you see here the two tables is um. It's a this a combination of logical operations when we can uh, compare different objects. So the compar the comparisons are through a logical level. This is important theory behind this. 
uh, it's not just to make, uh, if I had zero and zero, so what is the result? Yes, it depends if you are using an N operator, if you are using an OR operator, or if you are using a third operator or the negative function of these uh, kind of comparisons. So it's important to know that, for example, this kind of common operations are made for logical variables. So we need to learn to associate that uh, for each one of the different kind of classes that are have available, we have a set of operations available to manipulate each one of these objects to say something. Um, let's see some examples here, for example. Uh, let's start with a more basic one. Let's say that I want to assign to the variable x, let me make it greater, yes. To the variable, uh, I'm going to assign to the variable x the number six and to the variable y the number two, okay? I run the code and now I say, I know that x is equal to six and y is equal to two. So I this, if I check the class of these objects, uh, let's do, let's do check here. I know that this variable uh, is assigned to a class that is the numeric one. If I check the type of the type of variable that I have here in this moment, I can see the the kind of variable assigned is a double. Uh, can also be an integer. It depends how the how the the variables are assigned. As I previously was running the the codes, I changed the kind of or variables assignment. So as I know that I have a class that is a numeric class, uh, it means that I can do this kind of operations. Operation functions, I can run different kind of operations that are assigned to, to this kind of class. So I can, for example, make a, a multiplication of, a, of x plus y, and I get a result here. You can see in the panel. I also can, for example, assign a, a power function. So if I assign this power function, remember that x in this moment is equal to, to six. So six, it's uh, to the power of two. And so uh, that kind, I know that the kind of operation that I can perform, I can look for the results in Google, for example, and I can see that I can make a plus, a minus, a multiplication, a division, an exponent, and, and a modules, no? and, and so on. This is to talk for the most common operations. But so I also want to share with you that this is a very, very, very common error. Is uh, It's to uh, the unknown of that, of the arithmetical operations has uh, has a um, uh, in order in order to be applied. So it's important that when we are going to make a formula that this associated with this you kind know, of, of of operations, uh, we need to use parentheses. We need to know what is the order of the operations because, for example, you are not going to to read. Uh, this kind of, of formula in this order from, from, from left to right. We need to know that the, the dependence that is called this way uh, helps in order. When we need to, to respect that first, we are going to read the, the parentheses. Then the second operation that is going to be performed is related with the multiplication, with the exponent that is here. Uh, I have no exponents here. Then with the multiplication after after this is run the div the division uh, and here is an order to from left to right. So if you want to learn more about it, uh, I'm sharing a resource for that that I think that is very useful and, and the people commonly is confused with this. Now there is another kind of math uh, operation that you can perform in variables that are numeric. For example, this factorial is a function. So R is composed of functions. The functions have different levels. For example, this is a function that has just one purpose. The purpose is to calculate the factorial of a number. If I want to be the function, I just, I'm going to, to get the, the component of the of the function here. So 
I can read here that the function is composed for internal functions of R. For example, uh, it receiving a parameter. In this case, the X is the number four. And also it's triggering uh, an internal function that is called gamma. Uh, so the gamma basically is a generic function that is run in all the packages, in all the languages to calculate the factorial of, of a number. So that is why this is an internal function that you really don't see. You just take the function and just pull the pull the uh, the command and you receive the factorial of a number. Let's to remember that to calculate a factorial of a number is the same that to say four uh, plus three uh, plus two uh, plus one. And this is a uh, descomposition of the same number. Yes, we receive the same the same results. So like this case that I'm presenting to you is the same. We have a lot of functions available to avoid to build this thing. So you really need to know what kind of result you want to get, what kind of function, what kind of process you are doing in order to look for the functions that are built in R to do this. Now, um, talking about functions, we have, for example, another function that is very useful, that is built to, to create uh, random numbers. So for example, here, if I read this thing, I can see that the run e function uh, is it's built to receive a number. And in this case, receive, okay, how many random numbers do you want to build? I'm saying that I want 50. But I have also available the uh, range to build these numbers. No, we have uh, the minimum number to build these uh, random numbers is, for example, 10, and the maximum is going to be uh, 20 to say something or 100. So the random numbers is going to be, in, in fact, in this, uh, in this threshold. So this is another function available in the core of R. So let's swan this line. Now I'm going to read the, the variable and I have these 50 random numbers that were built to, to do something. Let's say that I'm going to calculate the mean, the mean of these numbers. I know that the mean is in another uh, a common uh, function that is available to, to work with numbers. Uh, with this series of, of vectors, when I have a store uh, 50 random variables, that are not limited by the threshold. So why I'm saying this, let's see that I'm going here to the helper and I here, oh, why is it? Hmm. I'm going here to the helper. Uh, so this is to say that for it, Example, uh, when you have available uh, this kind of information in the in the helper anytime, you can see here that we have uh, mandatory arguments that you need to send to a function. This is a mandatory argument. I cannot clear, create a random list without this mandatory argument. But there is another kind of uh, of optional arguments. And these optional arguments uh, can be or not provided depending if you want to do it that way. So we need to understand that the functions have at least inside these parentheses, they handle parameters. These, all these, uh, these um, uh, arguments that are provided here are part of, of a set of instructions that is going to receive the function. One needs to be mandatory and another one is going to be optional. So in this case, I'm sending just the basic one that is the, the mandatory result, uh, the mandatory variable to do this. And I can read here uh, that the function, for example, uh, is here uh, saying the arguments that I receive, the minimum variables and the maximum variables that I can receive. And it's also providing uh, information, uh, the math model that is used to create this, this, uh, this vector of random variables. So it's important sometimes, not always, but sometimes it's important to know it's created uh, a, a set of, 
of, of, of a vector or, for example, a specific variable or to calculate a model, it's important to know how we are creating this because we have available a lot of these uh, uh, resources. So, for example, to calculate this random variable, uh, it's, it's a function of one um, divided by the maximum number of the argument uh, my, minus the minimum argument uh, provided to the to the function. Now that I have this vector, I can call the the mean function. The mean function is also a way to say, okay, um, uh, give me the the mean of this uh, series of numbers, and it's the number zero point forty five. So you can assign this to a variable. And you can have the number here. Well. This is, this is just examples to say uh, what is the structure of a function in most of the cases. And well, you can really play with a lot of functions available. For example, we can try to get the absolute number, the absolute um, representation of a number. We know that the absolute uh, for a number, for example, um, let's just say that I have this 50 minus 50. And if I trigger, I receive the absolute. Uh, this means that I remove the minus of the of the of the number and this you can calculate the square root of uh, the ceiling that is a way to random a number to the next number uh, in the up, up to the next number or floor that this is another way to to, to round a number but to the to the down closest number we can truncate and assign how many digits we want to use. Uh, here's a lot, a lot of variables that you can use. Even you can use uh, some more complex, like the logarithmic, for example, to calculate the logarithm of a vector. So this is with the, for example, when we are working with with numbers. But we can also make expressions with Boolean variables. What is a Boolean variable? Well, a Boolean variable is by definition a uh, uh, this is a, um, a scalar that is the this is a variable that can receive uh, a true or false um, uh, options. These true false can be explicitly written with this true false or can be zeros or ones. Uh, so let's say that I'm going to assign uh, here uh, this this uh, comparison. I know that that with Boolean variables, I can perform logical operations. That these logical operations are based in the truth tables that I talked a few minutes before. So this is a way to compare if the number five that I'm signing here, uh, let's say uh, the number five uh, is greater than one. If I perform this, I say that it's true, but it's, my, it's, uh, it's less than four and it's false. But this operation is what defines the result because I'm, I'm using an and. And to have a true result of this operation, I need the two, the two arguments provided be true. And in this case, I have one that is true and one that is false. So when I clear this, I'm going to receive a false because one part of the argument is true and the other is false. But what happens if I use another kind of operation that is the or? I'm saying some of these parts are true, and we know that this part is true. So the result is going to be true in this case. And this way, we can make a lot, a lot of logical operations uh, with simple scalars like this, that is just one number, or with vectors, or with, other, or with sets another kind of particular of a uh, variable in R. We can also make comparisons, so greater, uh, less, equal. Uh, so you can just play with the numbers in order to, to, to see the results. Uh, here, uh, here's a lot of resources about the two tables. I think that is also a point of, confu of confusion that I have seen many times. People, uh, uh, needs to have a bit of theory of how to compare the, the objects when you are making this kind of nested functions. Uh, but you perhaps are thinking, okay, I can make um, 
operations with uh, with numbers and with Boolean variables, but we can also make operations with the strings. So what kind of operations I can do with the strings? It's, it's basically the same. I'm assigning here uh, this uh, chore string that mon to say Monday to this variable. So now uh, it's assigned to here. So now I'm going to compare is Monday equal to Saturday? Now that this is false. But I'm also asking, so is Monday equal to Sunday? Let's do run it. We got a false statement because neither of these arguments there are a comparison with making with the strings. It's true. But what, what happened if I just type here Monday? We know that this is true. So now that I'm using an or operator to make this comparison, I'm going to get the answer that I'm looking for. Yes, it's true. Monday is equal to this argument, even if this is false, because I have an or operator. So we can also play uh, and make logical operations with this kind of, uh, with the strings. The strings are these characters, composite for characters. Uh, and we can also, for example, ask if some kind of, of, of variable, some kind of text is a logical. Let's see. We know here that this kind of, 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 uh, of string is not a logical operation. I can make operations with a string, but the string is not a logical operation. The string is a string. So we need to have this present when we are working with this. Now uh, let's do, to, to see that also we have specific, very uh, particular data types that we can use in different languages. For example, uh, we can uh, access to complex numbers. The complex numbers, um, these uh, are used in most cases uh, in, a, in an internal way in the packages, in the, in the kind of functions that we are applying. For example, when you see a Cartesian, a Cartesian chart, when we see a, a distribution from values, uh, we are using, where, where the function is using this kind of values, this composition of imaginary numbers that are multiplied, are, are multipli multiplied for another numbers. But what is that? Well, for example, if I want to get the square root of a negative number, I'm going to receive an error because I cannot get the square root of a negative number. So a way to solve this in the, in the languages is that we can always factorize the number of a square root. For example, I can de uh, decompose this function in another kind of uh, small pieces in order to get a digital representation of the number. So for example, I know that the square root of 25 multiplied for the negative of the square root of one, I can get this uh, representation that is going to work well with the, uh, when we are working with, uh, with languages, with program languages. So let's try this. The square root of 25 multiplied for the negative square root for one. So I'm going to get a uh, I'm going to get a representation of this number that can uh, work with, uh, when we are working with, we are trying to develop a formula to say something. So this is an imaginary number and are defined with an I uh, close to the number. And what is important is because with these uh, kind of representations, I can make um, operations. For example, I can multiply, I can make a multiplication with uh, with imaginary number for three, and I'm going to build another kind of class of object. Let's see. And now you get a complex number. The complex number, to say it easy, is the combination of imaginary numbers, other kind of operations. And this is the basis of many of the plots that we get when we are working with, with, with R or another language, it doesn't matter. Okay, so um, to end with this part, there is another class of objects. Uh, it's not the only one, but we can and also class that is called null, just like that. So if I read what kind of class is uh, a variable that I'm assigning at null, what 
exists a class that is defined in R, like null. So we can work with this class if we have a lot of nulls in the data that we are trying to, to read. Well, uh, with this basic uh, classes that I have explained it, we can build a lot, a lot of different kind of, of resources. For example, here, uh, the, the, the previous explanation is just to talk about uh, uh, the, small, the small variable that exists, that is the escalar. With this, with this small uh, piece, we can build vectors like this, that, for example, contains um, more pieces of the same kind of variable. We can build matrices that is the same, uh, but has, uh, is composed for many rows and many columns, uh, but are the same data type. You cannot uh, assign a mix of, for example, of strings with number. We need the deep definition uh, where built with the same kind of data, of data type. We can have arrays. The, the arrays have more dimensions, as you can see here. We have a uh, third dimension. And we can also have a special data type that is the data frame. The difference uh, of the data frame with this kind of objects that looks uh, a bit similar is that in the data frame, we can store different kind of variables, like here. For example, here I have a string data type. Here I have a number or maybe a double. In the third column, I have an integer, but in the fourth column, I have a Boolean. So now you can see that the data frame has the advantage that I can mix different vectors uh, that are composed from different type of variables. And we have also a, a mix of, I can mix all these kind of structures that are composed from different kind of data types in an element that is called a list. So in the list, I can store uh, a vector, for example, uh, of, um, of integers, a vector of doubles, another uh, a vector of strings. I can store a, an array, and even I can store a data frame. So this is a most complex uh, kind of organized different kind of structures. And you need also to keep in mind that all these objects and all these data types are not, in fact, um, we are not working in an um, oriented object uh, approach. To work uh, with an oriented object approach in R, you need to handle more complex objects that are uh, classified like classes S3 and S4 in the case of R. Why? Because the objects has a different kind of structure and are not fixed. Can be uh, this kind of objects that can change the form and that can be, they have different properties and have associate uh, also uh, a couple of methods that can make the object change. But we are going to talk about this in, in another session. It's a big, a big, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a big uh, talk. So to finish with this, I want to let you that, for example, now that we know that we have basic kind of objects, with these basic kind of objects, we can build these complex structures that, for example, I'm going to build a vector. I use, now we know that I'm going to use this function that is called seek, and I'm going to build a vector that is composed for 100 numbers, and I'm jumping uh, this area from two to two. For example, I'm started with one, I'm jumping two numbers, jump into numbers, jump into numbers, and the vector is composed for a total of 100 numbers. I can do this in vice versa way. For example, I'm going to jump both, both in descending order. So I here, I'm specifying the, the organization of the vector that I want to get. I can also build a vector like this, or perhaps like this. You have a lot of ways to build a kind of vector. I can also build, build um, a vector that where I define, uh, for example, that I want to build a repetition of numbers that is uh, in the series of one and twos. Or perhaps I can change here and say, no, I want to build a representation 
uh, of this uh, set of one and threes. Let's run it. So I'm going to get one and threes 10 times. No, I want this 20 times. So you are going to build the same vector, but now it's repeating this vector uh, uh, 20 times in this series of numbers. Maybe I wanted the series uh, be greater, like with five, so and so on. So it depends how many times I want to be repeated this number. One, three, and five is going to be repeated 20 times. Uh, I can also uh, build a vector of charts. For example, this is a vector. This is a chart vector that is composed for three elements, blue, red, and green. So this kind of vector is usually used to, to create labels uh, for plots, for example, where I'm going to send uh, all the labels that I want to use in the legends. Uh, I, can, I can build also a vector of booleans. For example, I'm going to assign to this vector the elements, the true, true, false. And this is super uh, uh, useful when we are working with uh, comparisons in order to know if a variable is greater than this or is less than this. So it's created a complementary vector saying what variables are true and what variables are false. Um, and well, as I explained, we have another kind of structure that is the matrix. I'm going to run this in order to, that you see that for example, I'm building here, I'm using this function to build a matrix that has one column but 10 rows. Let's to see it. Here I build and I say, okay, you have 10 rows and you have one column. Now um, here I'm asking, is this a matrix? You can read here, I'm using another function to ask if the kind of variable that are, the kind of structure that I'm building is the type that I needed to make certain kind of, of fonts, let's say. Um, in order to see this in, uh, I, I don't, I don't uh, show the, the matrix. This is the matrix, one column and 10 rows, as you can see here. If I want to build a more uh, structured matrix, for example, this one, I'm saying, okay, please uh, build a matrix with these numbers that are here. Uh, I want two rows and I want three columns and I want to assign numbers. Uh, I want the, the rows, uh, this is the, the names that I want to assign to the rows and these are the names to the columns. Let's run this. And then when I read the, 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 the matrix, I can see that this is the variables that I sent to build the matrix. This is the columns assignment and this is the rows assignment. If you need a class of the object, you can be sure that you in fact have a matrix or equivalent to an array. I think that is some kind of change between versions. Okay, so this way, when we have a matrix, we can perform functions, but because this is the purpose of all this. For example, this is an example that I take from, from Delaney. When he's building a matrix the, with these variables, uh, here, here we have assigned names to the columns and names to the rows. Uh, so now that I have a matrix, I can make, I can, for example, make some kind of functions. I want to calculate a linear model of this, uh, of this matrix. This is the object over what, over which I want to calculate. Uh, a model. So I run this, I run this, and if I read the results, I can get here uh, the calculation on a linear model that is uh, made with this. But like this is a complex a statistical function, it's convenient that you take it here and you go over here and try to learn a bit more of what is doing this, this model, because we can uh, we need to take into account that every statistical model has assumption and the assumptions is the basic of every statistical model. We just not cannot take a model and just think that this is enough to, to work with data. Okay, so I think that I'm going to stop the, the talk here in order to, to see if you have some doubts and well, uh, I think that it's very important to to have a clear knowledge about what is available, what are the kind of data types and what the functions operate with these specific data types. So 
Um, anyway, you can have access to, if you have doubts, to these uh, data science guidance sessions uh, in order to make, um, uh, make a specific session with me or any one of the team. And here are the instructions to, to go through this. Uh, so that's all, guys. If you have questions, I'm here to listen to you.